Lord Russell, what is philosophy? Well, that's a very controversial question. I think no two philosophers will give you the same answer. Um, my own view would be that uh, uh, philosophy consists of uh, speculations about matters where exact knowledge is not yet possible. But that would only be my answer, not anybody else's. What's the difference between philosophy and science? <laughs> well, roughly you'd say science is what we know and philosophy is what we don't know. That's a simple definition. And for that reason, uh, Christians are perpetually passing over from philosophy into science as knowledge advances. Hello viewers, welcome to this session of Introduction to Philosophical Studies. Today we have with us Professor Dr. M. Ramakrishnan, former head of department of Government Brennan College, Talashiri. Let us listen to him. Today we shall introduce the basic characteristics, nature and functions of philosophy. Human beings, since the early stages of social history have faced strange and complex contradictions like life and death, truth and falsity, virtue and vice, pleasure and pain, etc. While facing such contradictions, early human beings, their communities have developed some kind of uh, naive explanations for these contradictions. Such naive explanations actually formed the earliest stage of philosophical thinking. And uh, we can find in ancient Indian history the Vedic religion which venerated and worshipped uh, natural forces in the form of gods. We have the excellent examples of uh, Indra, Varuna and Prajapati in Indian polytheism. At the same time, in ancient Greece, you can find many similar godheads in Homeric religion. And in brief, we can say that this kind of mythology formed uh, the earliest attempt of human beings to develop some kind of explanations for the strange phenomena in nature and human life. But even before that, you can find in the tribal communities what we today call eco-spiritualism. That is actually the concept of all objects in nature, both living and uh, non-living, as endowed with what we can call a kind of divinity. This view called eco-spiritualism actually antedates the Vedic and uh, Homeric religions. So, it is the sometimes the most naive form of philosophical thinking. Sir, how is it actually related to the field of philosophy, eco-spiritualism? Eco-spiritualism, you mean. Eco-spiritualism is actually very simple in its origin. Okay. So, actually human beings had a feeling of wonder before the forces of nature. Everything, the rivers, the trees, the animals around them actually the basic concept that formed eco-spiritualism is the belief that everything in nature is interconnected. This concept of interconnection makes it an ecological religion or a kind of religious ecology. That is why we say there is an element of philosophical thinking. That is the attempt to explain reality in their own way. The only difference is that Eco-spiritualism is simple without any complication in terms of logical argument, anything like that. If you ask the tribal people, what is the reason for your belief? 
their simple answer is i don't know or that is so this that is so but even then they tried to explain everything in nature and this love of nature is actually implied in their eco spiritualism that is why we consider it as sometimes antedating or predating the greek and uh, indian religions then we shall have a look at the origin of philosophical thinking as a human endowment or as a uniquely human enterprise we have already mentioned that it is a human enterprise in the exclusive sense but the question is why it is human we have to trace the origin of philosophical thinking back to the what we call the uh, leap in biological evolution which made some parts of the human brain a kind of uh, phase transition modern neurobiologists call it a kind of phase transition in which certain specific areas of human brain developed to make them fit for reasoning and abstraction and this basis of evolution is very important when we try to understand the origin of philosophy that is why we should consider philosophy as an expression of the human power for abstract thinking and in that sense philosophy is to be compared with uh, both religion and science the other two expressions of human pursuit of knowledge we call it the pursuit of knowledge which is the by product of evolutionary excellence of homo sapiens and this excellence actually created the three fruits of human thinking one is religion in the chronological order second is philosophy and third is science but remember that philosophy is a unique discipline at the same time it is distinct from religion as well as science it is also complementary to both religion and science philosophy is distinct from religion and science mainly on the mainly in terms of the knowledge base of these disciplines you can clearly see that religion has its knowledge base in faith whatever reasoning explanation you give for religious precepts and uh, postulates finally ultimately you have to depend upon faith. faith faith so everything should be reduced ultimately to that knowledge base of faith in religion in science you can see whatever is the mode of reasoning abstraction finally it goes back to the basis of empirical data what we call facts of objective reality without considering objective facts of reality you cannot build scientific knowledge but in the case of philosophy philosophy cannot depend upon faith on the other side empirical basis is not directly related to philosophical thinking so that is why i remember the great philosopher of the west bertrand russell defined philosophy as the no man's land between theology and science so it is actually standing in between theology and science and at the same time linking both theology and science so philosophy is exactly dependent on precisely dependent upon reasoning what we call introspective reasoning you may refer to empirical data you may refer to the question of god but whatever it is ultimately it is a matter of explaining things rationally so introspection and uh, rational explanation is the characteristic of philosophical method and in that sense it is different from religion which is based on faith as the ultimate source of knowledge and truth and science 
which depends upon empirical facts and data for scientific knowledge. And when we say that these things are distinct from one another, we cannot ignore the fact that philosophy is also complementary to both science and uh, religion or theology. Because I told you already that uh, philosophy like science and religion is a fruit of human pursuit of knowledge. In that sense, all these three domains, religion, philosophy and science, they have a single uniform goal, namely discovering truth. So, basically science, religion and philosophy are very different, but how do they complement each other? Yes, philosophy, science and religion are different, distinct from one another, mainly in the case of their method. But all these three disciplines or areas of knowledge have the same goal namely the search for truth. All these three disciplines ultimately try to discover what is truth. Then second important thing is that these three disciplines share the common concern namely that commitment to improve human life. So, whether it is religion or philosophy or science, all of them share that concern for improving human life. That is there as the common factor, complementary factor between them. Now we come to the question, what actually philosophers are doing? We know what scientists are doing, what religion is preaching and we have some idea about what philosophy is doing, but from a popular point of view, it is necessary to explain what is the task of philosophy and philosophers. At the first instance, we can say that the basic thing in philosophy is that those who are doing philosophy are actively, persistently engaged in questioning, criticizing our steadfast beliefs, not only in our day to day life, but also in theology, in the areas of science. Philosophers continue to ask questions. That is why we say, they are committed to explore every avenue of human knowledge, science, theology, art, every area is coming under the purview of philosophical scrutiny or what is a philosophical criticism. And uh, as we are philosophers are committed to all the avenues or analysis of all the avenues of knowledge, actually we discover truth by challenging popular beliefs and conventions. I say discover because it is not a mere discovery. You are actually removing the cover that is covering or hiding truth. Remember that great Indian Upanishad, Isha Vasyam has its celebrated hymn that says, Hiranmayena patrena satyasya pihitam mukham tattvam pushanna pavrunu satya dharmaya drishtaye. The truth is hidden behind a golden wheel, and uh, this golden wheel actually takes away the mind of the observer from its own inner contents. So, the truth is there covered by the golden wheel and it is the task of philosophy, philosophers to uncover or to discover that actual truth. So, philosophy in fact tells us what we should not believe. 
Sir, what exactly is meant by what we should not believe? Yes, what we should not believe first of all points to one thing. That is the basic thing in philosophy, the task of a philosopher is to challenge, scrutinize or analyze critically popular beliefs. So, we have so many things to believe in our day to day life, in our religious faith. Everywhere we believe things and we take things for granted. But a philosopher is uh, too keen and critical to analyze these things. I will tell you one thing. There is a story normally ascribed to the Zen masters. There was a dispute between two monks in a monastery about a flag. And uh, one monk asked that the flag is moving. The other quipped, no, it is not the flag, but the wind is moving. So, normally we look at the flag and believe that the flag is moving or it is being moved by the wind. But philosophers always disagree upon such things. This is an example of the disagreement between two monks that actually illustrates some complex disputes and disagreements in philosophy. Finally, the Zen master replied or tried to make a compromise by saying that, saying the truth that it is neither the flag nor the wind that is moving. What, ac what is actually moving is your mind my dear was the reply. So, when we look at these things, anywhere you find, we believe certain things. So, philosopher's task is to question, to challenge beliefs. So, that is why we say, philosophy says what you should not believe and why you should not believe.